Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Poke Explanations, the show where I discuss how our world would be if Pokemon really existed! Uh, before we begin, actually, I want to talk to you guys about something. I noticed a little bit of a misunderstanding in what this show is actually about uh, in the comments of the last episode I released. This show has close to nothing to do with the games. The Pokemon themselves and their descriptions are where it begins and ends with the games themselves. This show is in no way trying to help you uh, level up your team or find the best stats, the best Pokemon to use. I'm talking about real-world application of these Pokemon. How would they best affect our world? Or how would they most negatively affect our world? That's what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to talk about the games themselves. So, let's clear that up. But now we move to our subjects of the day, which are Plink, Clang, and their final evolution, Clink Lang. So let's just begin. First off, Clink. Let's jump right into its descriptions. Black version. The two mini gears that mesh together are predetermined. Each will rebound from other mini gears without meshing. White version. Interlocking two bodies and spinning around generates the energy they need to live. So right off the bat we notice that we have a Spoink-like scenario here. And I say Spoink-like because it's the first Pokemon I really notice this kind of situation with. They have to do X to live. Um, Spoink has to keep jumping and Clink has to keep rotating. Uh, it's two head gear, whatever you want to call them, to keep living. So as we read in the black description, the gears that mesh together to form a clink are predetermined. They will not mesh with any other gear, they cannot generate the energy to live uh, unless they find that gear, and this really raises one of the biggest questions about clink. That question being, is it man-made or not? We learned from playing Pokemon Black and White, and if you haven't played Pokemon Black and White yet, uh, I will give you the opportunity right now to click off this video, go somewhere else, skip ahead in the timeline, go somewhere, spoiler alert coming up in 3, 2, 1. Playing Pokemon Black and White, we learned by traveling through Charkstone mm -hmm. Cave with Professor Juniper and keeping her safe, that Twink are only about 100 years old, and they're only found in Charkstone Cave. As of yet, there's been no continuation on this topic, and we really don't know if they're man-made or not. The best guess I could make right now as to a Clink's origin is that they're not actually made of metal. They're made of this sort of charged mineral found only in Charged Stone Cave, and they just emerge that way. And they take shape in the form of these gears, but we really don't know what causes that gear shape even still. So putting Clink aside for a moment, and as we can't really do any more research on it, let's move along to its evolution, Clang. Now Clang is a very interesting Pokemon to begin with, and that begins its appearance, because it's a little deceiving. At first glance you think, oh, well one gear just turned around and hooked onto another one, but no, that's not the case. What I noticed in doing research on Clang is that both gears are still facing the same way. Now at first glance you would think, oh, well, one of the gears just turned around and hooked onto another gear, but that's not the case. As it turns out, both gears still face the same way, but because it's evolved, it's got this extra energy in it, and that other gear actually grew. We don't know how, but it did. So, putting aside that small aesthetic change for the moment, let's move on to its descriptions. Black version. By changing the direction in which it rotates, it communicates its feelings to others. White version. Spinning mini gears are rotated at high speeds and repeatedly fired away. It is dangerous if the gears don't return. Okay, so let's take another look at old playing up here. So, do you remember that little aesthetic change I was talking about earlier? Well, it turns out that second gear is the one they're talking about where the face of the original used to be, that's the only connection gear 1 still has to gear 2, but it can be used as a weapon now. That's the gear that is repeatedly fired away, like a boomerang effect almost. My best guess as to why Clink evolves into Clang is Clank gathers so much energy that it can't contain all, all of it inside itself at once, so that second gear has to expand, but that's all it does. It doesn't grab any other gears, it doesn't 
attach anything else to itself, it just expands. The second gear is its main storage unit, so it has to expand, and that's still its only connection. So that's why the white description says it's fired away repeatedly as a weapon and a way to communicate, but it's dangerous if it doesn't return. That's the only connection gear one has to gear two, or the now missing gear two and it cannot generate the energy to live and cannot sustain itself as a clang anymore. The gears just separate if gear 2 doesn't return. I see that as being very dangerous to this Pokemon. But like its previous form, Clink, there's really not a lot we can say about clang right now. So let's just move on to their final evolution, Clink Clang. And to its descriptions as well. Black version. Its red core functions as an energy tank. It fires the charged energy through its spikes into an area. White version. The gear with the red core is rotated at high speed for a rapid energy charge. Alright, so unlike Clang, Clink Clang actually has multiple connections. This means it can attack and communicate much like Clang did, so it really retains that. That's good for it. But it seems to have also adapted more gears to further its functionality. Those additions being the red gear at its base, any spike ring around it. Now while I don't doubt that it still uses that second gear to communicate and to attack and launch as uh, Clay did, I really believe that it's moved its main attack to the new parts it's gathered. Now as we read in both descriptions, it's able to rotate that newly acquired red gear at very high speeds in order to produce a very powerful energy charge from its new spiked base. That being said, I see it having a very good use in our world. Now in conclusion, I don't see Clink or Clang having a very drastic effect on our world. Yes, you could probably interconnect them to build some sort of machine or to power something, but I don't see any use beyond that. Clink Clang, on the other hand, could serve as a main conductor for say a Voltorb and Electrode uh, power plant or a large Magneton magnet and it probably has enough power to regulate a Magnezone. And if you were to use it in a fashion as that, you could use Clink and Clang um, to supply it with more power, uh, more stability, uh, to enhance the effect of said generator. And of course with so many electric Pokemon working together, uh, you could probably power a very, very large area, so that would be just world-changing right there. But, thank you everyone for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, I enjoy making these, and I hope to get a lot more out in the future. If you have a suggestion for a Pokemon you'd like me to talk about in the future, please leave it down below in the comments or in a video response. I read every comment I get, and I don't take them for granted. And speaking of comments, this episode was of course user submitted by this person here. And I look forward to any comments you guys leave in the future. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up down below, add to favorites, and subscribe if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate that and it would really help out the show. If you'd like to see some of my other work, there are links coming up at the end of the video. And speaking of the end of the video, I will catch you guys later.